I want to give you a quick primer on how to work with Adobe Muse and set up for Retina displays, which, what does that even mean? Well, I'm going to take just a second here and show you. A Retina display is something that, well, Apple kind of came up with the term Retina, if you will, and there are high DPI displays out there that are not Apple, so there's a lot of different kinds out there, but it basically means that if you look here, Apple, this is Apple's website, it means that on a typical or standard resolution display, we get only so many pixels. On a retina or a high DPI display, we get a lot more pixels in the same area. So the pixels are essentially smaller. We can pack more in an area. And if you know anything about resolution, that typically means that your images can look better, crisper, cleaner, sharper, whatever you want to call that. Well, how do we do that in Muse? How do we get really good looking images for what we're working on? Well, the first step is to create a site. Now, I've got a site open here. We can do this to an existing site, but it's it's best to start with this site and work that way. So I'm going to file new site. And when you start with a new site, you get the dialog here. You're going to see resolution. You're going to choose high DPI or 2X. Now what's going to happen is when you go to put images on your page, Muse is automatically going to convert it into two separate pictures. So one picture is going to be two. And what it's going to do is it's going to basically put the correct one in on the right device. So if it's a high DPI device, a retina display, it's going to use a better one, better looking one, more pixels in it. And if it's a standard display, it's going to use the standard one, which means a faster downloads, but it's not going to look as good. So we choose high DPI. It's going to say it's going to increase download time. That's true. So I can say use high DPI, click OK. You can now start designing. Okay, well, I've already got a website here, and I'm going to make sure that it is high DPI because we can switch between if we want to. I'm going to go to File Site Properties and say, okay, resolution under content here is high DPI. I switched it. Okay, let me click cancel there. So what, what if I want to put a picture on my page now? So I'll go to my home page and scroll down a bit. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to put a picture right here. Well, in order to put a picture out here, we can use a Photoshop file, a JPEG, GIF, ping, or SVG. If you put SVG out here, you don't have to worry about any of this retina stuff because, well, SVG is vector and it looks great anywhere and any size. But if we're going to put something like uh, a JPEG, for instance, that's what a lot of us use. If you want to use it a certain size, like I want to use my image at, let's say, 350 or 400 pixels wide on my page. What we need to do is in your program that you create the image, let's say here's my image in Photoshop. I'm going to go to image, image size. You want to make sure it's double the pixel density or resolution, if you will. And right now I'm going to say, okay, if I'm going to use it at 400 pixels wide in Muse, I'm going to make sure it's 800 or double that in Photoshop or whatever program I'm using. What we do then is we save it out as a JPEG or you know whatever we need. I'll go back over to Muse. I'll come under File and place it. I'll go grab that image out of my desktop. There it is right there. You can see it's 800 by 576. I'll open it up. Go ahead and place it out here by clicking. And look what it does. All the images on a high DPI site that you create are going to basically be halved. Okay, They're going to be half the width, half the height. It's going to do it proportionally. But what's going to happen is it's going to generate two images when you export or publish to get this to work. This is actually pretty cool. It's going to swap out the images one for high DPI and one for not. So just to show you, if I go out to export this as HTML, let me save this first. I'll save the site. I'll go out and just to show you export as HTML, I'll put it on my desktop. And it really doesn't matter, you know, what you call it, where you put it. I'm going to put it out on my desktop here and put it in a site and call it export just so you can see this quickly. And I'll click OK. It's going to do it. I got some errors. Don't worry about the blah, blah, blah contact form. Let me go out to my desktop here, take a look. There's the export folder. And just to show you, you're going to see there's an images folder. There's the home slide. It's got a 2x version at the original 800, and it's got the halved version at half the width and half the height, if you will. Now it's just going to swap the two out depending on whatever device it goes to. That's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. Now, if we want to, we can also do things like this. You can use background images. So you can go in and create a, let's say, a rectangle for instance, and we can go fill that if we want to with a background image, and it will also swap the background image out with a larger and smaller version, a high DPI versus a regular retina, uh, regular resolution, I should say. 
The key to all of this is to make an image at twice the pixel width that you're going to use it in, in Muse. I can't say that enough times. That's pretty much it. Just keep it at 72 PPI. The resolution doesn't honestly matter that much, but just keep it at that. Now, if you're going to create objects in round corners and things like this, all of that is still going to be uh, HTML and CSS driven, so that's fine. If you go as far as to do things like this, if you go as far as to, let's say I go to my widgets library and I decide to add a slideshow, okay? So I add a blank slideshow. There are some limits to this high DPI stuff. If you add a slideshow and you add images and you put them, make them at twice the width as the slideshow, that's great. It'll work. It'll swap them out and be awesome. The catch here, though, is that if I go to the slideshow, and this is something that's pretty cool, you can make a full width or 100% width slideshow pretty easily. By clicking on the image here and coming to Transform or Up and Control, you'll see a 100% width button. If I click on that, it's going to say, oh, let's make a responsive slideshow. That's awesome. This will not support high DPI right now. Okay, so if you put in a big, big image, it's just going to put that in there and scale it on the actual device. So if you do that, if you do a 100% width content, either in a slideshow or not, it won't support the high DPI. If you go and put a browser fill of a page background and you do like scale to fill, scale to fit, that type of thing, those two, it won't do the high DPI. Okay, so we have some limitations for this. As a matter of fact, back in this site here, I have a won't work page and I just copy this from the help, and you're going to see some of the things that it does not work with uh, that is high DPI, okay? So this, this won't work. Now, one last thing I want to mention here is that if we have back on my home page here, let me take this and I'll put it behind. If we have our images set out and I click on this image, for instance, and this is my high DPI site because I turned it on. If I go over to the assets panel and take a look, you're going to see that any image that is capable of being high DPI, meaning it's got enough pixels in it, you will see 2x over here in the assets panel. And it's going to tell you what it's doing. It's a high DPI image. If you place an image and it's not big enough or you scale it larger or scale it too large or do different things to it, you're suddenly going to see that the 2x is gone. It's because there's not enough pixel data there to make it work. Let me undo that. So you've always got to go over here and make sure that this 2x is showing up and that you did it right, and you're not scaling too large. We want to place and either keep it in 100% or make it a little smaller. You can do that too. The other thing is, if you have a site, you can make it so that if somebody is on a Retina device, it's going to automatically load the good-looking images, but the good-looking image, images, the high DPI images, are going to be bigger, which means it's going to take longer to download. Muse actually has, in the widgets library here, something called a high DPI on-off button. What you can do is you can drag this out to your page and stick it on your page somewhere. Now, people may not know what this does. That's my issue with this button. But if you drag this onto your page and you go out and test, let me go say I preview the page in the browser. What's going to do is it's going to have the high DPI turned off. Now, you're going to see it's going to be gray for me because I'm not on a high DPI screen. Okay, But if somebody's on a high DPI screen, that's actually going to be red. It's going to be turned off by default. You can put this button out here for people that might want to load the regular images on high DPI in a retina display if they have a slower internet connection, for instance. They can always toggle it on to see the high DPI. So I'm going to, I'm, you guys, I'm going to fake high DPI, and I'm just going to go a little fast here, but I'm going to go into the Chrome uh, developer tools, and in the Chrome developer tools, what I can do is I can fake a high DPI screen by turning this on. Don't worry about this. I'm just trying to fake a high DPI screen real quick. And I'm going to go in and turn that off. I'm actually going to select it again, make sure it does it. There we go. And it's going to take just a second here to reload. I'll be right back. Okay, we're all loaded here, and you can see in there that there is a HD now. It's turned off by default on a high DPI screen or a retina screen. The user can actually come in here and turn it on, and it will swap out the images for the good ones. So it'll actually put the retina ones in as long as this is green. This is great, like I said, if you have networks or you know people on internet connections that are a little bit slower, you can do this. You can do it for testing if you want to, but even if you don't have a retina screen, it's not going to work. Okay, I'm just faking it using what's called the Chrome developer tools. Don't worry about that. But this is high DPI in a nutshell. 
a great way for us to make an awesome looking site in Adobe Muse.